All right, welcome back, Hananika Geometry. Today we're going to continue with our transformation. So section 4.2, reflection. So let's go through a little bit of translations again, which was section 4.1, where you write the rule for the translation. So it starts off, so again, when you're writing a rule, that's when you're going x, y, and then you're telling what the x value is doing and what the y value is doing. So the x value is going to the right 2, so x plus 2. And then it's going down in the y, so at y minus 2, and that's writing a rule. So the next one, I'm going to write it in component form. So it's the same style of question, just we're writing it as a vector. So the k is going to the right 3, so that's a positive 3, and it's going up 5. So this is component form versus writing a rule. So this is section 4.1, so a little review of translation. Today we're going to start talking about reflection. So a reflection is ultimately the same figure. So it's still a rigid, uh, a rigid motion because it doesn't change the shape. But it does ultimately uh, flip it. So again, a reflection, like a mirror image. A reflection is a transformation that uses a line like a mirror to reflect an image. So you still have your pre-image and your image. And the mirror line is called the line of reflection. So notice when you have something that is not on the mirror line, okay? So I have something off the mirror line, then it's, that's the pre-image. Then the image would be also off the mirror line. And it goes as a perpendicular bisector, meaning it's exactly the same length from the line in a perpendicular manner. Now, if it's actually on the image line, then it is both, then it doesn't move. So the point, if it's already on the line of reflection, then the, the point, the pre-image and the actual image are the same. Vertices of a triangle ABC, 1, 3, 5, 2, 2, 1, are graphed the reflection of the triangle described. So I'm going to graph the initial point. So positive 1, positive 3, here's A. B is at positive 5, positive 2, here's B, and C is on positive 2, positive 1. Now, the line they want me to reflect across, I'm going to do this one in purple, is at Y equals 1, straight across, Y equals 1. And so the notice that A is 2 above that. And so, if I reflect it, it would be 2 below. It's exactly the same distance away from the mirror, or the line of symmetry, okay, on the other side. So, B is 1 above, so B prime would be 1 below. And I probably should have made this into a triangle, but here you go. And so now, notice C is actually on the line. So, the new C is still on the line. And this would be a reflection across the y equals 1 line. Notice it is a rigid motion. It does not change the actual shape. It merely flips it or reflects it across the line of symmetry or the line of reflection. Next one, I got triangle ABC. So it's the exact same triangle. So that doesn't change. So I still have the point 1, 3. There's A, 5, 2, there's B, and 2, 1, there's C. But my new line of reflection is at X equals 3. So it's going this way. So again, I'm going to connect the triangle points from the first one. Here we go. C is exactly 1 to the left, so C prime. A prime and B prime. And I realize that these kind of overlap each other, but there it is. So we'll cross X equals 3 line. The endpoints of the segments FG, F being a negative 1, 2, and G being at 1, 2, are reflected across the Y equals X line. 
so I'm going to graph the original. I'm going to put that in black. So negative 1, 2. And by the way, as you're doing your homework assignment tonight, it wouldn't be a horrible idea for you guys to use some colored pencils um, just to give yourself some perspective here. But there's the segment, FG, the original, reflect, reflected across the Y equals X line. So I'm going to draw this in purple. So Y equals X, Y equals X. The line that goes straight through the graph. And so now, notice it goes at an angle this time. And I'm going to erase here my G just to get it out of the way. So my G is now up here. It needs to be perpendicular or the exact same length going straight towards it. So G prime would be on the other side. Notice it is half. And so the next one is here for F prime. Now, there is a rule, okay? And I will give you these rules, okay? And this will be on your test as given. But anytime you're going to reflect across a Y equals X or Y equals negative X or X axis or Y axis, there's actually a rule that allows you to do this. And again, they will give that to you. And here it is. Let me go through this a little bit. So I am going to reflect across the x-axis. Any point you have is going to turn into that. So let's say I had the point 4, 3. If I'm going to reflect across the x-axis, the new point will be 4, negative 3. So that rule tells me exactly what my new points will be without me necessarily graphing it. So if I want to reflect across the y-axis, again, this will be given to you. If I have the point AB, it becomes negative AB. So I'm going to put some numbers in here. Let's say I went 5, 4. So my new point would be negative 5, 4. And I will give you this slide. This slide will be on your test. This slide will be on your quiz. So I have AB. But, I'm sorry, reflecting across y equals x. So if I have a point a, b, it becomes b, a. So I'm going to make up some numbers here. Let's say I had the point 3, 7. Then reflecting across the y equals x line, I would have 7, 3. And then the last one, if I reflect across y equals negative x, if I have the point, again, I'm going to use 4, 8. And then if I reflect it across y equals negative x, it becomes negative 8, negative 4. So these rules allow me to do it without necessarily graphing it and just counting. Reflect the segment FG from example 2, y equals negative x. Graph the segment. So I'm going to use the rule. Okay? I'm going to write down the rule for y equals negative x right here. So if I have y equals negative x for a, b, then it's going to be negative b, negative a. So knowing that. I take my original one, F prime will now be, again, you're going to flip it around, so negative 2, positive 1. And G prime would be uh, negative 2, negative 1. Now, let's see if I can actually graph these, and then I'm going to see if I can actually get it right without, I'm going to move this out of the way here. So F, G, F, let's see if we can put that in black here. F is negative 1, positive 2. G is positive 1, positive 2. And so there's FG. What I think the new points should be are negative 2, positive 1. There's F. And negative 2. I'm sorry, negative 2, positive 1. And negative 2, negative 1. That makes sense. So here's my Y equals negative X line. Notice... F prime is exactly on the other side of the purple line. G prime is exactly on the other side of the G of the purple line. And so that segment has been reflected across the Y equals negative X. So again, you can do it by hand, or you can just use the rule that you're given. So for some of you, you may want to write that write the previous slide down on all the different rules. And again, that will be given to you. Reflection postulate. The reflection is a rigid motion. We talked about that earlier. Because you are not changing the actual shape of the triangle or the shape of the figure, 
It is a rigid motion. Now, like we talked about before, the composition, therefore, would also be a rigid motion. So we got what we're going to do is a glide and reflection. So we're going to do two transformations at the same time. And I know the picture is a little hard to understand, but we'll go through it. If I did a translation, which is a rigid motion, I am asking the picture to go in one direction and recreating a P prime, Q prime. Then I want to reflect again. Notice it has the double prime. So now I'm going to reflect across. So P to P double prime and Q to Q double prime. So I have multiple, I have multiple transformations then on the same segment. Here we go. With the vertices 3, 2, 6, 3, and 7, 1, and its image after a glide and reflection. So the first one, I want to glide. I want to do a translation. I don't know if I like the word glide, but translation. So 3, 2, 6, 3, 7, 1. So here is A, B, C. Now, I want to go negative 4 for x and keep the same y. And I'll do a different color, so let's do this one in red. So negative 4, that'd be a prime. Negative 4, c prime. Negative 4, b prime. So here's my new triangle. Next. I want to do a reflection on the x-axis. Now you can use the rule. And I apologize for the glitch there. So ultimately going from ABC, the original, the pre-image, to the image for A prime, B prime, C prime. Now I want to do a reflection across the x-axis. And you can either draw in the x-axis and then, or look at the x-axis and do the reflection, or you can go the rule. So the rule that you would be given for x-axis would be a negative b. So again, if you want to look at the rule and just draw all the points, otherwise you could just look at the x-axis, so here's the x-axis, and then ultimately do a reflection across that. So I'm going to do this one in black. So across the x-axis there would be c double prime. So going to down here this would be b double prime and going down to right here Oops, sorry, B should be 3. I apologize there. 3, B double prime, A double prime, and so my ending points. Okay, after the translation and the reflection, okay, is down here. So we have C being at the point, 3, negative 1, B being at the point, 2, negative 3, and A being at the point, negative 1, negative 2. And again, that's A double prime. The line of symmetry that goes through is also known as the line of reflection. So notice the points on either side. So a point here on the, on the butterfly is the same as the point over there. So almost all have symmetrical wing patterns because the genes responsible for the pattern cells on both wings have the same genetic code. So if I have a picture, I'm going to try to draw in lines of symmetry. So in a trapezoid, there is one line of symmetry that goes straight down. Everything else would not be the same on either side. Now in a hexagon, there's a lot more. I'm going to do different colors. One, if I did all the vertices, those would all be lines of symmetry. And then, if you actually cut perpendicular, so there are six lines of symmetry, where this one there is one line of symmetry. And in the last one, there are none. Okay, you can sit and look at it all you want. When you cut it, it cut it, it would ultimately not be the same on either side. So notice a point here going back to my hexagon and a point. Uh, on either side. So if I have a point here, it would match a point there and so on. So there's none in the parallelogram. SAT, what is the positive solution for the given equation? This goes back to your Algebra 1 days and factoring. So I need to be able to factor 
4x squared plus 7x minus 36. So first, you need factors of 4, and you also need factors of 36. Um, so I'm going to start off with 2x and 2x. And again, I haven't done this yet, so I'm not sure. Um, actually, I'm going to change my opinion there. Let's try 4. So let's go 4x and x. And now I'm going to switch colors here. So let's say I wanted some factors of 36 that would help me. So what about a positive 4? Try that again, sorry. So a negative 9 and a positive 4. Again, you always check your inner and your outer. So negative 9x, positive 16x, it does add up to the middle. Now solving, you set the parentheses equal to 0. So 4x minus 9 equals 0, I would get 9 fourths. x plus 4 equals 0, I get negative 4. And so the only answer they have over here is positive 9 fourths. Your homework assignment for reflection should be a worksheet. If you have any questions, make sure you talk to your teacher, and good luck.